In this class, we will see the StatPro analysis, a 2D analysis of the structure which we discussed in the last class. So, this structure will consist of a diaphragm wall, a T diaphragm wall which is shown here, then there will be a pile here in the front, this is the C side, then we will have another pile then the anchor wall. So, these piles are spaced at 4 meter center to center, anchor walls also at 4 meter, the front row pile also at 4 meter center to center, the T diaphragm wall which will be flange which will be 4 meter and this is about 3.6 meter. So, you will have front row pile, T diaphragm wall, middle row pile and the anchor wall. The spacing between this pile and this pile is 12 meter where the crane will be operating. Now, we will see the cross section. So, in the cross section if you see this will be the front row pile, this will be the middle row pile, this will be the main diaphragm wall, this will be the anchor wall. You have the crane beam on top of this, another crane beam on top of this, we have a retaining beam and then we have a fender panel here with a fender beam, there will be a service trench at this location. We will see the uh, discretization by stat pro finite element analysis. We will see the diaphragm wall, pile, anchor walls modeled by beam element. As you see here, we are using two types of element. This is the beam element for the front row pile. This is the beam element for the main diaphragm wall. This will be the beam element for the middle row pile, this will be the beam element for the anchor wall and this is the beam elements for the beams connecting this. We are taking only a 2D analysis and in this we will be seeing only the line diagram. That means, uh, we take a typical span of 4 meter and then we are idealizing this. When you go for a 3D rendering, you will be seeing how it looks like. Before that, we have to see the soil support up to minus 17 meter here, the soil is soft clay, it will not offer any resistance. The latest IS code says if the n value is less than 1 or 2, do not don't, don't take the soil support from the soft clay layer. So, soft clay layer is up to minus 17. So, we have not modeled the clay up to this point. Below that, we have modeled the clay by assuming a spring element. The spring element is a discrete springs, it is not a continuous spring. The spacing between the springs is normally taken is about 1 meter center to center. Typically, we take 1 meter, but generally the spacing should not be more than the thickness of the diaphragm wall or diameter of the pile. In this case, the diameter of the pile is 1 meter, thickness of the diaphragm wall is 800. So, we are keeping very close to 1 meter. There is a procedure to calculate the spring constant that we will discuss in another class. So, we idealize the soil support. Here, this uh, piles are connected with a spring, main diaphragm wall also connected by spring, the middle row pile also connected by spring and uh, the last anchor wall that is also connected by spring. Then we have a boundary condition that is a roller boundary condition is given at the bottom to idealize the vertical load that will be transferred directly below the pile or diaphragm wall and uh, the horizontal support is given by anchor wall. This is a plane frame analysis only 2D idealization. In this case, there would not be any load perpendicular to this uh, plane of the frame, loads only will be in this direction. The different loads are uh, dead loads, live loads. Uh, birthing force, moving force, etcetera. Now, we will see the 3D rendering. You rotate this uh, figure. So, what uh, we will be doing is, we will be generating this by giving this uh, input systems, one is the nodal coordinates. Next is element connectivity data. Q 
here we will be giving two elements one is a beam element another is a spring element the beam element is to idealize the structure the spring element to idealize the soil then we will give the geometric properties material properties then we will give the boundary condition so boundary condition is very important if you don't give the boundary condition then uh, your results will not be proper then we have to give the load data then uh, load combination so we are now doing only a static analysis but the program can be used to do a dynamic analysis also so these are the input data which you have to give in a sequence so this shows the 3d rendering of the structure as you see here the piles are uh, uh, idealized by a geometric property which is a circular cross section giving the moment of inertia and area this is a t diaphragm wall this also you have to give the geometric properties calculated for the t section this is for the middle row pile this is also a circular cross section this is anchor wall which is a rectangular cross section for these sections you have to correspondingly give the geometric properties or give the section dimensions then it will automatically calculate the properties the material properties are links modulus and poisson's ratio here it is concrete that can be given this is the beam which is connecting the all the structures at the top the boundary conditions are applied at the founding level not allowing the structure to move in the downward direction so this uh, coordinates are this is x axis what is this one this huh? this is the y axis and perpendicular to the plane of the board is z axis so what we will be having is we will be having the boundary conditions delta x delta y and theta z that means displacement in the delta x x and y direction and rotation about the z axis for a plane frame two displacements and one rotation this is the boundary condition next we will see the so here what we are doing is i have initially given the plan then give the discretization now what you are seeing is the rendering now we will apply the loads and see how the loads are applied for each case separately the loads that will be applied are dead load live load birthing force mooring force active earth pressure differential water pressure seismic force these are the typical forces these loads will be applied individually and you can get the results individually also for the analysis then we will be doing it for the combinations also now we will see the loads one by one how it is applied so now first we will see the dead load as you see here dead load is applied on the beam this is the weight of the beam plus the weight of the slab which is for a distance of 4 meter that is 2 meter on either side that will be applied as a uniformly distributed load on this structure next we will see the live load there are different types of live loads one is a uniformly distributed live load then we may have the crane loads also crane loads are uh, applied as uh, point loads which are applied in this direction the crane loads uh, can have a component in the lateral direction also then we will see the birthing force birthing force is when the ship is coming and hitting this is the birthing force then mooring force this is the mooring force this is one of the critical combination is the mooring force along with the active earth pressure and differential water pressure we will see the active earth pressure
So, this is the diaphragm wall main diaphragm wall which will be subjected to the active air pressure that is shown here. Then we will also have uh, uh, we have removed some springs here when you do the analysis that is why we have put the passive air pressure in the opposite direction because there will be a some plastic uh, deformation of the soil. So, we cannot put a spring with infinite stiffness with the stiffness with infinite displacement. So, we are replacing the spring with a equivalent force on the opposite side then differential water pressure so this is the differential water pressure the water level here on the land side and water level at a lower level on the sea side this is the differential water pressure applied right up to the bottom once you apply the loads and perform the analysis we have to see certain results the results are deflections bending moment and axial force on the structure and shear force on the structure these are the results which we have to see we will see one by one for that that is the deflection bending moment axial force and shear force also these are the results once you perform the analysis you will be getting these results deflection shear force bending moment and axial force as you see in this slide if we see the load combination number 26 we see the load combination number 26 so this is uh, dead load crane load active air pressure and differential water pressure with a load factor of 1 this is for a serviceability limit state condition you can also do it with berthing force or mooring force this load combination number 28 will most probably be critical we will see the results for load combination number 28. So, when we do this load combination number 28 for this deflection we have to see that the deflection is less than about 100 millimeters we will see the animation of this just to give an idea how the total frame deflects. So, the values are written there the maximum deflection is at the top which is about 100 millimeter we have to graphically see the deflection to see whether the deflection is uh, properly uh, properly uh, obtained or otherwise. So, once you give the results then it will be very clear when you see the output results you can feel that the results are correct or otherwise. Now, we will see the animation how the deflection is animation is the deflection will be in some time frame as the load is applied how the structure is deforming and then when the load is removed the structure will come back to the original position. you have to apply proper scaling then only you can see the deflection. Are you able to see the structure oscillating? You see here the top of the structure moves towards this side, then comes back to rest. The soil is not allowing the structure to deform below this level. If you see this uh, diaphragm wall very carefully, diaphragm wall deforms like this. You go to the deflection diagram. Enlarge it. 
as you see here the top deflection is more here and as you see here the deflection is not reducing it is going to 0 only here that is for the main wall and main diaphragm wall here the deflection is 0 at much higher level for the piles both for the main diaphragm wall as well as anchor wall the deflection is 0 at much lower depth whereas here it is much higher depth this is something like a free earth support this diaphragm walls the founding level is not very high just giving a point support here whereas for the piles it gives a fixed support you will have the deflection going on the other side also now we will see the bending one diagram what i explained now it will be clear if you see the bending one diagram this is at a higher scale now we will reduce the scale so that the results will be very clear I leave it as it is see as you see here this is for the main diaphragm wall the bending moment is very high this is of the order of 30000 kilo newton meter as you see here the bending moment is 30000 it may increase to 35000 here then it comes back and becomes zero here for the anchor wall it may be about 33000 here and then it uh, goes to the negative side and then becomes zero whereas this is only on the positive side only one direction where is the maximum moment for the main diaphragm wall that is at this level because this is subjected to a uniformly distributed earth pressure there is a load acting on this anchor wall there is no load acting on the length of the anchor wall the load is acting only on the main wall once you have the load acting on this the bending moment goes like this the bending moment does not go to the other side it goes only to one side since there is a load here acting on this see it is something like this suppose you have a beam like this subjected to a UDL you will have bending one diagram like this all of you know for a fixed beam the bending one diagram is like this but if the support sinks the bending moment goes like this so this is what you are seeing for the main wall main anchor wall you have the bending one diagram only on the one side only so you can see the beam bending moment also if you take a joint a particular joint in the joint whatever movement is there in the diaphragm wall and the beam on this side and this side if you sum up all the movements the net movement will be zero that is what you have to check once again next uh, we will see the axial force so this is the axial force acting on the structure the scales are very high so we are reducing the scale so that this becomes very clear the axial force on the diaphragm wall piles are shown here similarly we can get the shear force diagram also now I will ask him to generate some problem anchor wall how to give the input data how to give the geometric properties and material properties this is a shear force diagram please go to the anchor wall and change the properties we will first see what are all the properties of this element particular element go to the uh, pile this is the pile you just uh, this pile is uh, this is the pile r1 is the pile what you are seeing here we are given circular section of 1 meter then we will see r3 you see here this is the cross section of the pile i am sorry diaphragm wall main wall where total depth yd is about 3.6 meter and uh, this ZB actually this uh, structure is slightly different what is shown here is like this but what we have modeled is the other way around like this we have modeled you do not see that figure because it will be a little bit confusing so this uh, section is correct this value is yd this yd is 
3.6 meter this is also correct what is written here is Z is 0.8 meters next is Z B next is uh, Y B, this is your Y B, bottom flange is 0.8 meter, this is 4 meter. Because our T section is ultra, this figure and uh, th that figure what is shown has to be redrawn like this. So, this is your Z B which is 4 meters. Then we will go to the anchor wall. This anchor wall. Uh, this dimension may not be proportional because this is given here. So, Y D is about 4 meters that is the depth of the anchor wall and Z D is 1 meter. Go to the section now there is one more section circular section of 1 meter this is also for concrete. There are 4 sections that are given a section is for uh, 1 meter that is the middle row of pile 1 meter diameter pile. Then we have the rectangular section. 2.7 by 1.2 meter there are 5 sections this 2.7 by 1.2 meter is nothing but the beam element what is shown here. Then we have a prismatic T section that is R 3 that is for the main diaphragm wall. Then we have a rectangular anchor wall that is 4 meter by 1 meter. Then we have a circular section for the pile that is 1 meter in diameter. Now we will see the material properties. So, material property is concrete that is also concrete uh, for which it will take uh, default uh, members whatever is the value you have you can give stainless steel, stainless steel, aluminum or concrete. Now, we have chosen concrete default values will be given there. Now, you will see the boundary conditions how the boundary conditions are applied. So, one by one we will see what are the boundary conditions we will just see these are the boundary condition this is the first boundary condition. So, here we are giving some spring constant values that is the x direction that is in this direction it is allowed to displace, but there is a spring stiffness here. In the y direction the displacement is 0, z x m x m y since it is a plane frame these values will be 0 that is why we have given f z m x m y is 0. We have also allowed m z to be non 0. Okay. Next slide, I will explain in another class. So, you have to apply the boundary conditions then you have to perform the analysis. Now, we will go to the input data file where all these uh, details are given in a text format. The first line is a stat file it gives some joint name then the date of the thing is given then uh, what is the input width is given. The units for which the analysis is to be carried out is given this is meter and kilo Newton. Just enlarge the size, control and enlarge. Control screen is not working. Okay, then we have to give the joint coordinates. So, here you have to give the units in meters and kilo newtons, that is, the length unit should be given in meter and the force unit to be given in kilo newton. If it is x small less, you have to give it in kilo newton per meter square, that you have to strictly follow. Moment of inertia you have to give it in meter power 4, you should not change the units. Then there are the joints for which you give the x, y and z coordinate. So, z coordinate is 0 for all the joints, x and y coordinates are written here. Then we have to give the member incidences that is member connectivity between which node to which node it is connected. Then you have to give the material properties. So, we are giving isotropic concrete, we give the x modulus Poisson's ratio density, uh, alpha is the temperature expansion coefficient, damping this is used for the dynamic analysis. 
then we have to give the member property we have to assign it to each uh, uh, members how it is there then we have to give the constraints that is the supports we have to give we are giving all the supports as pinned and some supports we are giving fixed but releasing certain uh, degrees of freedom. So, then we go to the loads how the loads are applied. So, we are applying the self weight. So, we are applying the dead load live load joint load that may be for birthing force or mooring force go down we give a linear variation or a trapezoidal variation. So, these are the various loads that are applied then we have to give the load combination. So, each uh, load we have to give some combination. So, if you see load 41 load type seismic we give the load combination 1.5 dead load, 1.5 live load, 1.5 active earth pressure, 1 differential water pressure and 1.5 birthing force. Then go to the end of the text file. Then we have to do the analysis then print all then finish. So, these are the so, you can either graphically input all the nodal points or you can type it out also, but generally nowadays it is performed in graphical things only. Now, I will summarize what we are giving. So, we have a beam connecting the piles diaphragm wall another row of pile another row of pile. So, here these are the nodes which are used to define the points for various elements this uh, coordinates you have to give. So, you have to first define the axis you can define the axis like this this is your x axis this is your y axis wherever that uh, chart datum level is there you can take it 0 0.0. So, the center line of the beam you have to model then you have to give the nodal coordinate for each points that you can give. Suppose you are defining by different springs, the springs are at 1 meter center to center, you have to model the spring element here for each pile. Suppose you join this as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 nodes. Here we have to give a roller support and give the boundary condition this is the place where we give the boundary condition. Boundary condition means at this particular point this delta y deflection in the y direction is 0 that is the boundary condition what we are giving. At this particular point what we are giving is we are giving some stiffness for the pile there is a procedure to calculate the k f x using the equation called as basic equation based on which you can calculate the spring stiffness we will discuss in some other class about the spring stiffness. You can connect 1 and 2 by element number 1 this can be element number 2, 2 to 3 then this can be element number 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 then you can continue here 9 is over then you can have 10 then you will have uh, one element here this is to idealize the soil support then we have the boundary condition here and 11 12 13 14 15 16 then you can have the spring here connecting this elements spring element is to be defined separately the numbering and the type should be defined separately then you have up to 9 then this can be the 10th element, this can be the 11th element, this is 12, this is 13, this is 14, this is 15, 16, 17. The nodal coordinates when you want to see node number 1, the x coordinate is 0, 0.0. Suppose the center line of the beam is uh, plus 3, 
the y coordinate is 3.0, z coordinate is 0, 0.0. Is it clear? x is 0, y is 3.0 and z is 0, 0.0. So, the perpendicular to the plane of the board is the z axis. When you go to the node number 2, suppose this distance is 2 meters, node number 2 will be x coordinate will be 2.0 y coordinate will be 0, 3.0 and z coordinate is 0, 0.0. This is your dredge level which is minus 17. In that case nodal coordinate 3 is x coordinate will be 2.0, y coordinate will be minus 17.0, z coordinate will be 0, 0.0. This is how we have to give the coordinates. Any doubts in this? You can graphically do this also. Please do graphically for this. When you go to the element connectivity data, this element connectivity data 2, the element number 2 is connected between which node and which node? 2 and 3. So, what we are giving to the program is how the node numbers are connected. What is the connectivity data for 4? 4 is between you can give 3 and 4 or 4 and 3, but it has some implication. There is a local coordinate system which it will define. Then we have the geometric properties. Suppose you take this uh, member number 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. All these members are circular piles of 1 meter diameter. So, you can define 1 meter diameter as a circular member that you can define it as a index number 1. That, material, that geometric property you can assign to all these members. That is the next one. Then material property you can give it as concrete. You can give the Young's modulus, Poisson ratio, uh, temperature coefficient and other things. Then boundary conditions you have to apply 1, 2, 3, 4 nodes that is at the founding level. You have to apply boundary conditions here also because at this point you are attaching the spring. So, once you define all the nodes for the elements, all the nodes for the all the structures, then give the connectivity data for the beam element, then you can go for the spring elements, you can give the spring element values also. Now, he will be discretizing the structure just to see how he is doing this. The same structure will be discretized. So, idealize only one main wall, mm. the geometry property and the material property. You need a T diaphragm. We give OID is uh, 3.6 meter, is, uh, then is uh, ZD is 4.0 meter. YB is uh, 2.8 meters, ZB is 0 0.8 meter. Concrete you give. Show the 3D rendering. So, R 1 is the anchor wall property that it will take material property. So, now you can see the 3 D rendering of the element how the member is looking like. So, now we will go and change this property like what we have seen here. 
So, now the flange is on that side on the right side now we will change it to the left side. Now, we will change uh, Y D as uh, 3.6 let it remain Z D we will make it as 0 0.8 Y B as 0 0.8 z b as 4 meters now we will see the rendering rotate this so now the flange is on the other side earlier the flange is on the left side now the flange is on the right side now we will go and see uh, change this as an anchor wall as a rectangular section We will change this uh, prismatic to some other member, we will change it as a rectangular member, we will make the Y D as uh, 4.0, Z D as uh, 1 meter. So, now this uh, depth of the section is along the x axis and the thickness of the section is in the z axis this is the correct property of the anchor wall. We will now go and change this uh, x and uh, z go to the next section. Suppose you are uh, changing this section this is 1 meter y d is 1 meter z d is 4 meter. So, it is in the wrong direction this is not the way anchor wall is placed. So, then we can correct this next we will change this into a circular section y d a 1 meter you put whatever diameter you want you can put enlarge this looks like a circular section. Now, we will see how to apply the boundary condition go to the bottom most node give a hinge, hinge condition pin do you give So, now it has gone as a pinned condition then we will apply a spring slightly above one more note some value we will give 5000. Go one more note not that note you apply in some other note one more note was there no. enlarge the figure. Now, the spring has been applied in this direction earlier uh, there is a method by which in a, a spring element can be attached as a separate type of element. Now, what we are doing is we are applying as a boundary condition there are two ways to apply a soil idealization one is to give a spring element this is there earlier version of SAP 4 and all in start pro you can give it as a spring element itself. Suppose, the soil stiffness is changing you go to the boundary condition what is the one which was given earlier earlier one you go no no we have given S 3 no one fixed but we have given earlier we have given a spring no support 2. support 2 or support 3 support 4 you see ok fixed but
you go to the spring element okay what here we are giving is the fx uh, we give a spring stiffness kfx you give 5000 see this value 5000 what we are giving is kilo newton meter 5000 kilo newton per meter wait kilo newton per meter means if there is a 1 millimeter deflection the load that will be transferred will be 5000 into 1 by 1000 that is 5 kilo newton this is for a soft soil suppose if it is a rock then we can put one more zero 50000 that means 50000 means 50000 into 1 millimeter by 1000 that will be equal to 50 kilo newton so you can for different types of soil using basic equation you can calculate the kfx and apply suppose you uh, put another spring in the y direction suppose we create one more uh, value kfx 5000 kfy as uh, 50000 assign it at the bottom most node where we are given hinge this will assign it to the hinge earlier we have assumed this as a hinge that we will now change it you go to the support edit that I think we have to give z I think x and y only no give the value no y you release y you release uh, x and y only you give 5000 and 50000 why the other spring is not coming KFI give 50,000. Generally, the stiffness in the vertical direction is uh, much higher than in the lateral direction. So, he, now you are seeing that green color which shows your spring in the see to summarize, you can give that the boundary bottommost boundary either as a hinge or as a fixed condition. RSS spring. Okay.